Father, we just thank you right now for this service on today, God. We pray right now that the word that you have given for the house in this season, God, that it falls upon good ground. Father, prepare the hearts and the minds to those that are watching this at video by at home or those that are in the house, Father, that they are able to receive it, God. And Father, that we will examine ourselves and move forward in you, God. Father, for your healing is real. Your healing is true. And Father, you come here, you brought us here, and you partner with us, oh God. And so, Father, I know that we, I pray that from this day forth that we do our part, Father, as you do your part. So we bless and honor you this day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Turn with me to Matthew, the ninth chapter. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Amen. Uh, today I got one of the, the Lord gave me one of them tough words. It's tough. It's tough. And yes, it hit me. It hit, you know, God don't give a preacher a sermon unless it hit him first. And trust me, it, this one is, it, this is like, you know how you get hit in the gut and wasn't expecting it? It just knocks the wind right out of you. Well, how many of you know God can send a word that'll knock the wind out of you, but he's, he also sent his son Jesus there to resuscitate you? <laughs> Amen. Amen. You gotta, so, so if this word knocks the wind right out, you just know that Jesus is standing by. Amen. Matthew, the ninth chapter, we start at verse 35, and it reads, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel, gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. He healed every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion on them because of they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest is truly, truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Amen. When he says send forth laborers into his harvest, you have to be a disciple anointed of God in order to harvest. Amen. Amen, because it's the, it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. It's not the gift, it's the anointing. Amen. So today's message is, and I'm going to read verse 35 again. And Jesus went about the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. He didn't say some diseases. He didn't say a little bit. He said every sickness and every disease. So today we, our subject title is sickness and disease. Sickness and disease. Amen. What is the root cause of sickness and disease? What is it? Well, I'm here to tell you the root cause of it is sin. Sin is the root cause of of 99% of sickness and disease. Notice I said 99%. Because there is some sickness that is brought upon a person for the demonstration of God's healing power. So in St. John 11, chapter the fourth verse, it reads like this. Jesus heard that. He said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. So therefore, it tells me that everybody that was sick was not is not sick because of uh, of sin, but they were sick because it was there to bring glory to the Father. Amen. Now, everybody in church ain't sick because it's there to bring glory to the Father. I said ninety nine percent. So therefore, there's some stuff going on in the house. So that is the one percent. So let us deal with the ninety nine. Now we all know that sin exists in the church. And there should be, there, and it should be in the church because they're babes in Christ. Some of, some of that sin is because of ignorance and the grace of God will cover you until you come into the knowledge of what you're doing that is not pleasing to God. Once you are aware, then there is no 
no more grace for that sin. And you should no longer do it. Amen? So I'm not going to say that every church is not is sin free. There's no way. Because the church is a hospital for sickness. And therefore, the church is there to help heal those that are sick and oppressed of the devil. Amen? So, but there are some that have been in church for 20 years. If you've been in church for more than seven years and you're still practicing, notice I said practicing sin, you're going to have a problem. Amen? But we all know the wages of sin is death. So death is not immediate in most cases, but something is introduced in your body that is designed to pay you your wages. Amen? Now in church, we are eager to, eager to point out the obvious sins. We are eager to point out homosexuality. The church used to be eager to point out adultery and fornication. However, now that seems to be a normal practice. The church used to be eager to point out liars and, and thieves and those that violate the top ten, but we don't seem to point those out no more. It seems to be normal practice in the house of God. Amen. They don't, they don't want to talk about the sin that's prevalent in the house. They want, to, they, want to, they want to point the finger at those obvious sins. But today I want to talk about one of those sins that is not in the top ten, but prevalent in the church. I want to talk to you about gluttony. I want to talk to you about overeating. Ah, now we know the flesh is enmity to God. It's God's enemy. Yet in society, we are taught that when your heart breaks, go get you a gallon of ice cream. And eat and eat until you feel better. Some people like Ben and Jerry. Some people like Brahms. But uh, I got my favorite too. It's called Bluebell. Amen. But you know, we, we're taught to eat and eat until, until the sorrow goes away. But that's one of the biggest tricks of the enemy. Because you're already depressed. Amen. Your heart broken, you're depressed, and, and now you eat and eat and look down and see an additional 30 pounds. Oh, and now you're more depressed because, and the cycle continues because of an additional 30 pounds, you continue to eat. And then there's 50, then there's 70, and now 100 in some cases. And now, now this isn't the scenario for everybody, but I'm just saying this is, this is one that has captured many, amen? The Bible addresses what one, one is to do when he has a heavy heart. But I have never heard it discussed in the house of the Lord. I've never heard it discussed across the pulpit of what do I do when my heart is broken? What, what does the Bible say? Uh, they skip around this scripture. I wonder why. Proverbs 31. Go there for me because I want you to see this. You know, I, I ain't got nothing but Bible, so I can only teach. If God said it, it's got, if it's true, it's true. Let's just deal with it. Amen? Proverbs 31, verse 4 reads like this. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. So I tell you right there. If you plan on being a king, that's not for you. Lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. So you, when you drink, you forget the law and you forget the weak and you forget to help people that they need. He said, but verse 6, it tells you what happened. It says, give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. So if you're ready to die, go on, get you a shot of cognac. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> shot of uh, old, old that number 6. <laughs> That mash, that bean, get you some chip. You ready to die? Go get you some strong to drink. Because that's what it says. And I'm a, hey, I ain't got nothing but word. <laughs> and it says, wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. So if you get depressed, it's like, get a glass of wine. He said, let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Now that don't mean drink the whole gallon. Amen. Amen. Get you a glass, settle down, and go. If you are not a drinker, and I, I, I admit this, you know, and when I just stopped, when I used to have a glass, it put me to sleep. Just, just go on, go to sleep. So if you're not a drinker, just get you a glass, go on to sleep. Just sleep it off. In the morning, start a new day. Next day, get up, dust yourself off, 
and move forward. Now some of us take it a bit far with the drinking. When there was no problem, we were drinking. So we created a problem. So you can't use this scripture to say why you're drinking. You, you ain't got no problem, you're just drinking. It says, by no means, I said, by no means am I saying go do this if this is a problem for you because it's a problem for me. Amen. I got a problem with this. I can't drink wine by myself because I fall down. But when I fall down, most people tend to leave me there. Especially when you're my size. So if you're my size, please, don't, I don't recommend this. Because if you do, you don't know where to stop. Therefore, I don't indulge because I know who I am. And I am a king. If I got a problem, I'll take it to Jesus. Amen. Yeah. All right. But let's deal with the, the subject matter of this sermon. It's, and if we're dealing with gluttony here. Now, how many of us in church is guilty of this? Yes, even me. I'm guilty. I used to be a 38 in the waist, and now I'm a 42-ish. And sometimes a 44, depending on the designer. But I just want to, I got here because of sickness, which came because of a selfish desire. And I also didn't fast as often as I did prior to the sin. Notice how I, I, I put frosting on my cornbread. I said it was a selfish desire. Sometimes the selfish desire can be sin if it's not in the will of God. And you know that. Amen? So after five years, let me, let me just tell you about Lorenzo. After five years of celibacy, I did not want to be single anymore. And therefore I married a young lady that said I was a husband. But if you know that, <laughs> but if you know that what you're doing is not what God wants you to do, it's sin. Amen. So I got married, got divorced. Amen. So me being still in rebellion, hence the sickness. Amen. I went and married again, the sickness came on my body. Well, the Lord has me back where I was prior to the marriages, celibate and serving him. Amen. So I'm not telling you something or teaching something that I ain't been through myself. Amen. I'm telling you what happened. Sickness comes because of sin. It comes because of rebellion. Amen? In Philippians 1 and 6, he said, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So if God began a work in you, and you deviated from the plan, and you see, that's why you say Because he begun a work in you, and you deviated from the plan. So God is trying to get you back on track with the plan that he had for your life. So the Lord started working me and he's going to finish it. I say this, your plans must line up with his plans or they will not work. I am a witness. Amen? Now, we don't want to talk about gluttony or overeating in the church, but it's sin and it's causing sickness and disease in the body of Christ. And we're walking around like it's normal. It's not normal in the kingdom. Jesus healed all who were sick. Obesity is a disease and it comes upon us because of overeating and not taking care of the temple. Know ye not that your body is the temple of Christ, the temple of the Holy Ghost. Don't you know he dwells in here? You have to take care of this vessel because it don't belong to you. It belongs to him. So let's look at the things that's caused by obesity because most of your people say, well, I, that ain't me, that ain't me. Okay, well, all right, cool. That's the problem. We don't want to acknowledge the sin that's in our life. Well, I'm telling you, it's me. Amen, it's me. I am working on me. Type two, let's talk about it, obesity. It starts, it, causes, it comes in the form of type two diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, cardiovascular disease, stroke, osteoarthritis, spinal disorders. Type 2 diabetes can cause amputations, heart disease, stroke, kidney, kidney disease, circulatory and nerve defects, heart to heal infections, impotence, respiratory disorders, asthma, cancer. All of these things are things that are triggered by overeating. Obesity can have a dramatic impact on your body.
everybody. Now, I could go into detail on all of these, but I know our attention expand is about that long. So I'm just going to identify it. You recognize it. If it ain't you, okay, cool. But if it is you, examine yourselves. Amen? God say, examine ourselves. Hold up the mirror of this word to your life. Look at your life and where did, what did you do? Where did you go wrong? What is it that you did that's not pleasing to the Holy Ghost? What is it that you're doing? What is it that God told me to do and I just went in the opposite direction that is causing these things to happen to me? God, I, look, I don't know about your life, but you know about your life. See, God, Jesus came to set the captives free, and he healed all that was sick. So in order to get healed, your first thing you must do is acknowledge that there is sin in my life. Ah, but I just eat, I just eat a little bit at midnight, at 2 in the morning, <laughs> at 3 in the morning, when I can't sleep. I just eat a little bit. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it will sneak up on you and overtake you. Amen? I must ask the question, let me tell you this. Obesity has a dramatic impact on your body. The conditions related to obesity can be detrimental to your health. However, many of these complications can be avoided or cured through weight loss. Oh, I just said the word now. Weight loss. <laughs> when was the last time did you, that you went on a real good fast? And I say, I am just ask it. Not this modified stuff where you can eat this, that, and this, eat just a little bit of it. No, a fast. When you cause this flesh to cry out for food. When was the last time you mortified this body for the pleasure, for the presence of God in your life? We need to get back to mortifying this flesh. Amen? Ah, when, he said with every temptation, God made a way of escape. The way of escape is called self-discipline. Amen? In order to be a disciple, you must have, be able to discipline yourself. We have to get, get this flesh under control. We have to... Uh, Many of us started off as disciples, but somewhere along the way, we lost our willingness to discipline ourselves. How do I know? I look at your fruit. Look at the fruit that is in the church. Amen. I'm talking. Look at the fruit that's in the pulpit. <laughs> I, I'm not exempt. Look, the, the, I told you it used to be a 38. <laughs> it's a 42 right now. 42. But I tell you, I'm working on me. I will get this back down. I'm telling you this because you can measure it from this day forward. Because Lorenzo is going to do what God say do. Amen? And so I need you to jump on board and for you to do what God say do. It's that one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-discipline. Why? Because we have to crucify this flesh. This flesh is an enemy of God. It hates your spirit. <laughs> if the flesh will take you out if you let it. It wants to expand because Paul said in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. In this flesh will always have you have a selfish desire. And when that, when that selfish desire has come from your mind into your heart, it manifests and the sin is there. No man has ever said God tempted you because he didn't. The selfishness, the selfish desire within you that flesh that you didn't mortify is now able to overtake your spirit and do what it want to do. Amen? So we must mortify, mean kill. You've got to take this flesh up, go off the hill, and nail it to the cross. Amen? And the only way you're going to nail it to the cross is to stop eating. Amen? Oh, uh, I want to talk about this. This, this, this gluttony. And some of us want to take a shortcut and go get surgery. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right there. Don't you know that is a major injury to your body? You have to recover from that. Amen. I, I, if, you, if you lack self 
discipline. If you lack the willpower, I'm going to tell you this. Ask the Holy Ghost to help you, and he will. Amen? He is there to help you. He was there to help you do the things of God. So just like he, he will keep you, just like he fills you, he will not come in the area until you invite him. Invite him to the dinner table. Invite him on your plate. Invite him inside your stomach. Invite him to guard your mouth so that you don't consume so much. Ask him for wisdom and he will help you. And if you don't want to ask him, oh, hey amen. I'm going to tell you, if you don't want to ask him and you still need some help, there, I, I remember when I was a child, before this, ga this gastric bypass surgery thing was happening, one of the things that they used to do was they would go to the dentist and the dentist will wire the person's mouth shut. Amen. And that will cause you to fast, okay? Because the only thing you consume, can consume with your mouth wired shut is what goes through a straw. Amen. I would rather suck my food through a straw than to get that gastric bypass and have that major injury in my life. There's no, there's no guarantee that you're going to get up from that surgery. There's no guarantee that you're going that surgery is going to heal up nicely. I'm telling you, exercise some self-discipline in your life and let God, let the Holy Spirit help you. I know that blue bell is good. Amen. It's good. I love me a homemade cake and some blue bell. The apple pie. You know, I love Snickers. Well, I used to like Snickers. I know Snickers don't break. But I love me a Milky Way or Three Musketeers. We have to back off of those things. Amen. And exercise some self-discipline so that sickness and disease don't inherit this flesh. Amen. This flesh will take you out if you let it. Now, it's slower moving in taking out the saints than it is in the non-believer. But the results are the same. It will take you out before your time. Now, I, I want to put a claim here. <clears throat> in Deuteronomy, you, you want to talk about well, what, where did they deal with gluttony in the Bible? Well, let's go to Deuteronomy 21. I got to go to the Old Testament. I'm going to tell you how serious this is. How serious this is. In Deuteronomy 21, is a woman and a, a husband had a son. He was out of order. <clears throat> and in verse 20, <clears throat> they brought him before the elders. And it says this. It says, And they shall say unto the elders of, city, of, of, of his city, This is our son, stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Amen? He just eating up everything and drinking up everything. And all, verse 21, and all the men of, the, of his city shall stone him with stones. This is how serious this is. They shall stone him with stones that he die. So shalt thou put evil away from among you. This is an evil spirit. And all of Israel shall hear and fear. This is an evil spirit that is sitting up in the church today and we act like it's normal. He was a rebellious child, a drunkard, wouldn't obey and a glutton, and he was taken out before his time. Now don't get me wrong. I say everybody, everybody got different body types. We weren't all expected to be one body type, but you have to be the best you you can be. Everybody wasn't meant to be a brick house, and everybody wasn't meant to be a, a Arnold Schwarzenegger. No! But you got to be the best you you can be. Take care of the temple. Oh, well, well, my, my family just big boned I have never seen a fat skeleton. So big boned is not the answer. Yo, you need to, to be the best you you can be. And if the best you you can be is 300 pounds, 350, I'm going to ask you this question. Uh -oh. I, I, I told you this is a tough one. How many people do you know that 60 and older weigh 300 pounds? Uh, amen. Come on. Uh -huh. Do the math. Just look around you. How many people do you know that's 300 pounds, 60 and older? This thing will kill you early. 
Amen? Yeah. It is the wages of sin. So stop. But the, you're overeating. We don't want to talk about that in the church. But we get out of here on Sunday mornings, and the first thing we do is we head to a buffet. That is the devil. Amen. Go buy Kroger or the grocery store and get the little sushi thing and be happy. Amen. We need to exercise some self-discipline. Get this weight off the temple so that you can be effective in the kingdom of God. He said, but when the, he said, then said he unto his disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. I, I have to talk about the, the leadership. We are in the house of God. And we're not identifying the sin that is taken out the house of the Lord. We're, the sin is in the house and it's called a buffet. We got to, look, I'm sorry. It exercise some discipline. And the church is guilty of it. Well, we're going to go on a fast, but let's just go on a Daniel fast where we can eat. No! Get, just give me a good three days of, of just water. A good three days. You, you, you got to take a, some medicine to eat some food with it. Juice something with your medicine. Just do something for three days. Give me a good three days. Just give me a good three days of a fast. Amen? Amen. Take away some, some kick back from the table. Amen? And discipline yourself so that you can be effective in the kingdom. So that you can be a laborer in the vineyard and you won't lose. You know what? It's hard to witness to somebody when you're 300 pounds and you got to go to the third floor on the door and knock. <laughs> you ain't going up there. That person going to miss out because you wouldn't kick away from the table. Oh, I'm going there. Amen. We have to be effective in the kingdom. And you cannot be an effective witness and you halfway dying talking about the Lord saves. Amen. 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 Get, get it together. Amen. Amen. So I tell you this. I'm not talking to nobody but myself. Because I've been in that position and I sent other people to the third floor. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. Because I, hey, y'all can go. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to get this second floor right here. I know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not, I'm not telling you something I ain't been through. So I'm telling you this. Get this temple together so that you can be an effective laborer. You are a disciple. Exercise some self-discipline in your life. The self-discipline of kicking away from the table. <clears throat> you are not losing weight if you go to bed and you ain't home. Go to bed hungry. Pray, thank God that, you can, that you're able to sleep. I'm telling you. And after the first 20 pounds, I assure you, you will feel so great. But don't stop there because some of us got a lot more to go. I know I got a lot more to go. I'm telling you now, I, I, I showed you. You see how tight this jacket is on me. But I tell you this, I'm going to exercise some self-discipline. I'm talking about me too. I'm going to exercise something. And I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit, I'm going to pray right now that the Holy Spirit help me, help you, help me get to a place where we are effective in the kingdom. Amen. Help me mortify the desires of this flesh. Amen. So that we are able to be used by him whenever he sees fit. Someone is up there on the third floor that needs somebody to witness to them. But because there's no elevator, they're going to lose out. Amen. Don't let that be your testimony. Don't let it be your testimony. Especially when you hear God telling you to go. You, Lord, send me, I'll go. But I ain't going to the third floor. I ain't going to the third floor. <laughs> 